Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Sparkle English where I teach you how to improve your English writing skills. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you all about how to use commas with quotation marks or speech marks. There are three basic rules you need to know and we are going to cover each of them. So let's get started. First of all, what are quotation marks? Quotation marks, also known as speech marks, are punctuation marks used to indicate direct speech or a quotation in written text. They help us to show who said what and make it easier to understand what we are reading. Quotation marks always come in pairs. Now, in this lesson, I am talking about how to use quotation marks in American English. So first we're going to talk about when to use a comma to introduce a quote. So we use a comma to introduce a quotation that is a complete sentence. So let's look at some examples. The teacher said, the test is tomorrow. Here we have the speaker tag, and this is introducing the quotation that comes after the speaker tag. The teacher said, comma, quotation mark, the test is tomorrow, period, closing quotation mark. So the comma comes before the quotation mark with a space in between. And note that the test is tomorrow is a complete sentence. Here's another example. The news anchor announced the election results are in. Again, we have the speaker tag here, followed by a comma, a space, then a quotation mark, a complete sentence with a period, and a closing quotation mark. The flight attendant announced, please fasten your seatbelts. My boss said, we need to have the report done by Friday. Now let's look at our second rule, when to use a comma after a quote. So sometimes the speaker tag comes before the direct speech that we are quoting, and sometimes it comes after. So we use a comma to separate the quoted material from the rest of the sentence. So for example, the test is tomorrow, the teacher said. So we have reversed this from what we saw in our last example. The teacher said now comes at the end of the sentence. And because the test is tomorrow normally ends in a period. We have to change that period to a comma, then the closing quotation mark, and then the teacher said. Note that the is not capitalized because it is not the beginning of a sentence. The beginning of the sentence is now this the, which is capitalized. The election results are in, comma, the news anchor announced, Again, we have the opening quotation mark and the closing quotation mark that enclose this complete sentence, which is completed with a comma instead of a period. Please fasten your seatbelts, the flight attendant announced. We need to have the report done by Friday, my boss said. Okay, so note that the comma is inside the quotation in all of these examples. As I showed you before, we change the period to a comma when the speaker tag comes after the quote. But what if this was an exclamation mark? The test is tomorrow, the teacher exclaimed. In this sentence, because we end it with an exclamation mark, we do not use a comma. The comma only replaces the period. There is no comma in this sentence. Are you ready for the test tomorrow? The teacher asked. Here, this is a question, so we end it with a question mark and we do not use a comma. So we only use a comma when it normally would end with a period and the speaker tag comes after the quote. Now, before we go on to rule number three, I recommend you order my 50 plus page ebook on 16 basic punctuation rules. I talk about everything you need to know about punctuation in English, from how to use periods, apostrophes, quotation marks, commas, and the workbook even contains worksheets at the end for extra practice. 
You can click in the link in the description below to order my ebook or in the pinned comment under this video. So now let's go on to rule number three, how to use commas with interrupted quotations. So we use quotation marks around both parts of the interrupted quotation. We separate quotations from the speaker tag with commas. Let's look at some examples. The test is tomorrow, the teacher said, so I hope everyone has been studying. Here we have the speaker tag in the middle of the sentence. The complete quotation is, the test is tomorrow, so I hope everyone has been studying. But the speaker tag is in the middle. So we have to put a comma after the first part and then the closing quotation mark, then the speaker tag, the teacher said, another comma on the outside of the quotation mark, and then we finish the quote, end it with a period and the closing quotation mark. So we have two sets of quotation marks and two commas. Let's look at another example. The election results are in, the news anchor announced, and Elizabeth Swan is our new president. Again, we have to add a comma after the first part and also after the speaker tag. And remember that the comma is on the inside of the quotation for the first part and it comes after the speaker tag before the last part of the quotation. Now I want to look at a different example. So I just showed you how we use commas with interrupted quotations, but how do you know the difference between when to add a period after the speaker tag or a comma? Look at this example. The test is tomorrow, the teacher said. I hope everyone has been studying. In this case, I hope everyone has been studying is a complete sentence and the test is tomorrow is also a complete sentence. So here you would not put a comma after the teacher said, because the test is tomorrow, I hope everyone has been studying, would be a comma splice. So if the first part of the quotation is an independent clause and the second part of the quotation is an independent clause, you can break it up with a period after the speaker tag. Now let's look at the second example. The election results are in, the news anchor announced, period. Elizabeth Swan is our new president. Again, we don't have a coordinating conjunction in this second example. So we would finish this speaker tag with a period and then we have the second part of the quotation in quotes. And note that we do have a comma after the election results are in because the speaker tag is attached to this first quotation. Okay, now it's time for a quiz. You have to correct any mistakes in the following sentences. Number one, we aren't ready for the meeting, Jimmy said. Number two, Taylor said, congratulations on your new job. Number three, have you ever been to Europe, Ben asked. Number four, I don't think I can make it to the meeting, she said apologetically. Number five, she admitted, I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. Number six, when I'm really tired, she confessed, I usually just sleep on the couch. And finally, number seven, you're my best friend, he said with a warm smile. Okay, let's correct these together. Number one is incorrect. With number one, we ended this quotation with a period, and this is incorrect. We have to change this into a comma because we have the speaker tag Jimmy said at the end. Number two is correct. Number three is incorrect. Have you ever been to Europe? Ben asked. This is a question, so we end it with a question mark and we do not have a comma. We just have the quotation marks with no space between it. Number four is incorrect. We have the opening quotation mark. I don't think I can make it to the meeting, 
but we're missing the closing quotation mark, which comes after the comma. And remember, there would be a comma, closing quotation mark, then a space before she. Number five is correct. Number six is incorrect. Here we have a tricky one. When I'm really tired, she confessed, I usually just sleep on the couch. We're missing a punctuation mark after confessed. Do you think we put a period here or a comma? We actually put a comma and you might wonder why. I usually just sleep on the couch is an independent clause. It is a complete sentence. However, when I'm really tired is a dependent clause and we need to attach it to this independent clause. When I'm really tired, she confessed. That's not a complete sentence. She is saying this entire quote, when I'm really tired, I usually just sleep on the couch. So we can't break this into two different sentences. We have to place the speaker tag in the middle and have it separated by these two commas. Finally, number seven is incorrect. You're my best friend, comma, before the quotation. He said with a warm smile. So let me know in the comment section how many you got correct out of seven. Again, I really recommend you order my ebook if you had any difficulty with this lesson. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to Sparkle English for more lessons like this one.